Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's weekly market view for Monday, the 22nd of July, 2024 to Friday, the 26th of July, 2024. My name is Vishal. Let's get started. All right, so let's start uh, with an FT chart. And uh, tomorrow is going to be a big day because tomorrow is the union budget. So we expect to see uh, a huge volatility during uh, the budget hours. And probably it's going to then uh, gain a little bit of more direction post, uh, you know, 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Now, uh, before we go a little bit more into the, um, you know, the analysis of, you know, uh, in terms of what the budget is going to do, Let's quickly just review our charts to see what price action has done one day prior to the budget. So let's start off with the Nifty daily chart. And if you look at the uh, daily chart of the Nifty, um, we can clearly see that uh, price formed a bearish candle on uh, Friday. So we gave, gave, got a little bit of a bearish closing. Today, the markets did open um, uh, and move a little bit into the green and then uh, there was a little bit of sell-off. So there seems to be a little, uh, uh, you know, indecision in the market right now. Uh, if you just drop down to the 240-minute chart, uh, there are some interesting levels uh, that have been created on the Nifty chart. So let's go through them as well. So if you look uh, very, very closely here, there is this uh, drop base rally supply level. And that's more or less removed... Uh, and now we are into this consolidation phase. So there is a possibility that we might again try to rally up all the way to, towards 24,712 and then possibly try and gain uh, a little bit more of a clear direction. If that doesn't happen, uh, then we have one level of demand which is uh, sitting right here below all these levels. Um, and this could be also an area where uh, you know the market is uh, you know rounding up at this 24,000 round number over here. Uh, so this level looks also a very, very key level right now. Uh, are we going to get a, a huge swing on the day of the budget? Um, most likely not, but uh, we don't know because uh, in the past uh, budget sessions, we have had some, uh, you know, some strong moves on, on the day itself. And specifically, those moves have actually come, you know, once uh, the major announcements have been made, that is post-12.30. But my assumption is that until... Um, uh, you know, uh, we, we we will be getting those, uh, you know, those early morning spikes in the morning because of the uncertainty. But I think the market is probably going to get a little bit more directional once uh, or probably post 12.30. Uh, Nifty does have a very, very big range right now. So 24,712 uh, to 24,854. This is a uh, 240 minute supply zone on the Nifty. And uh, on the downside, we have 24,080 to 23,969. So for this uh, expiry, uh, we would want to see these two key levels either hold or um, most likely if either of them breaches, then probably we will uh, get to know where the price is heading next. If you look at the open interest levels, we can clearly see that 24,000 level is nicely um, you know, coinciding with this level of demand. So 24,000 is going to be a strong support for this market. And if you look at uh, the resistance, uh, we have 25,500 levels and just above the supply zone, we have 25,000 um, uh, levels as well. Again, a round number. So yes, if uh, there is you know some unexpected news that nobody knows and markets do become positive again, uh, we might see a close above 24,854. That will probably induce uh, or probably uh, you know create a little bit of more force for the market to move towards uh, 25,000 odd levels. Okay, let's see what's happening on the Bank Nifty now. Uh, Bank Nifty is um, just moving sideways, uh, very, very uncertain. And um, um, as expected, we did see a little bit of a positive move today. And that is obviously because uh, we had uh, the two major banks uh, announcing the results, uh, primarily HDFC Bank. And uh, that has probably what has caused this move. Uh, and we'll come back to the HDFC Bank chart in a short while. But uh, uh, how is the bank nifty likely to move tomorrow? So uh, I personally believe that the bank nifty is probably going to play within this range, which is marked on the chart here. Um, and this level is uh, actually from a 75 minute chart. So let's go to the 75 minute chart. I'll just close, show you what the levels are and we'll talk a little bit more about these levels. So if you can see that we have this drop base rally 51,354 to 51,141. 
And then we also have this pro gap, which is from 53,046 to 53,307. And here you can clearly see that I have connected these uh, these trend lines here. I've just connect, tried to connect, uh, you know, uh, two or three closer points. And what I believe is that um, there is um, a lot of liquidity um, and there is possibility that uh, prices in case of any kind of bearish news will try to, um, uh, you know, surpass this trend line and try to move into this area. Now we do have... Um, a strong support here, which is at first at 52,000. But if 52,000 breaks convincingly, then most likely this uh, level will be more or less taken out. And then we might see a little bit of a support coming close to 51,500. And this could happen tomorrow itself. Okay, so we don't know that, but uh, uh, whether it's going to happen, but it's it's likely that if it happens, then it can happen even tomorrow. Because tomorrow is going to be a very, very uh, you know volatile day. In case if the market decides to push to the upside, the first barrier for the Nifty will be this 52,750 level to cross. It has acted as a very, very strong resistance in the past. Uh, nearly on three occasions, price has failed to move above 52,750. So any attempt to break this level will probably infuse more buying or more of the breakout traders trying to participate into buying, uh, pushing the price into this area which is going to be a pretty uh, decent supply zone where some selling pressure can come so um the levels to watch out for for nifty for for obviously the budget as well as for uh, uh, the 31st july expiry will be for uh, 53046 to 53307 to the upside and on the demand zone we have 51354 to 51141 to the downside so let us see how these levels play out and of course, um, you can create whatever view you want. So if you're a directional trader or you are a non-directional trader, then obviously you can, you know, uh, create your own views and, and, you know, take advantage of this market situation. Let's move on to the Nifty Financial Services. So very similar to the Bank Nifty, we have the Nifty Financial Services also. Um, and let's go uh, to a slightly smaller time frame here, 75 minutes. And just in case if some of you might, might be wondering why am I looking at 75 minute chart because tomorrow is budget and obviously I don't want to be looking at five minutes and 10 minute charts, but um, I want to be looking at some key levels and uh, um, the simple rule of leaning against uh, slightly higher time frames when you know you have a big news event such as budget coming. So this is what is going to uh, probably create uh, this move. Okay, so if you closely look, um, Nifty also has been extremely range bound. It has tried to come close to hit this supply level, not yet hit. Maybe tomorrow is the day where it will probably test this level of supply. And then on the downside, you have, um, in fact, uh, uh, a key level of demand, which is this uh, level over here, 23,100 to 23,000. Uh, uh, there is no open interest level that is surrounding this area. So we'll have to just wait and watch uh, when you want to plan to take any trades on the pin nifty. Yes, definitely to the upside, we have 24,000. And um, to the downside, we have 23,600. Uh, the other levels are a little far away, so I don't want to talk much about them. I think tomorrow our focus is primarily going to be on this range, whether this range holds or whether this range is more likely to break. All right, let's move on to the next market, which is the Nifty Midcap Select Index. And um, the Nifty Midcap uh, is uh, is really a beast, right? I mean, just look at these moves that you get in a in a single day, right? So you have uh, a move down, and then you have a strong move up, which nearly covers uh, the entire move uh, that it has created on the prior day. Let's go to a slightly smaller time frame. Let's say to a seventy five minute chart. Maybe we can probably gauge. A little bit of what is happening on this uh, on this index. So if you closely see markets gapped up, gapped up, gapped up, and then we had this big fall. And uh, today markets have rallied very strongly from twelve thousand sixty nine, nearly four hundred points, straight into this area of supply. So it'll be very very interesting to see as to what uh, you know mid cap has in store for us. Um, uh, and let's look at some key levels if, if we are able to see those uh, key levels. So right now, pretty much, um, uh, let me just load the four hour chart first.
Yes, and when we look at the four-hour chart, we uh, see this supply zone over here on the four-hour chart. And we also have a confluence of uh, open interest levels that is uh, one is at 12,450 and the other is 12,500. So it seems like mid-cap may not find it uh, um, uh, very easy to move towards these upper levels. But obviously, again, uh, budget is always an exceptional news. And to the downside, uh, we do have um, a, a couple of levels. We have this level of demand over here, which is this rally based rally and i particularly like this level because this is the level from where the market has actually created a, a new uh, move of course we do have these gap levels here and we also have one test of this level coming here so if the supply zone does play out uh, then mid cap nifty is not going to find a very hard time in breaking uh, these levels and trying to push a little bit low so let's keep a close watch on this level tomorrow whether the supply zone holds or whether the bank nifty nifty uh, drags uh, the indices uh, further down. Okay. So let us uh, look at the Sensex now. And on the Sensex, pretty much we see um, uh, it's behaving more or less like the Nifty. If we go on to a smaller time frame chart, let's first go to a 240 minute chart. And let us see what the levels look like. Okay, so. Uh, let me just refresh the graph here. Yeah, perfect. Now it's much better. All right. So uh, what do we see on the Sensex? So on the Sensex also, we do see this uh, big rally-based drop supply zone, uh, which is also a very similar supply zone, which is created on the Nifty. Again, if price does move into this level of supply, we might see a little bit of profit booking coming onto this area here. And then we also see this uh, level, which is also very similar to the Bank Nifty drop base rally and also coinciding with the open interest level. So, um, yes, we do have this 83,000 level, which is a little far fetched as of now. But uh, I would uh, still feel that. Um, during tomorrow's movement, we would expect Sensex to move uh, between 81,095 to 81,555 supply. Uh, and uh, in on the demand zone, we have 79,245 to 78,085. So still a pretty big range, but um, this is where uh, we would expect to see Sensex also consolidated. And uh, last but not the least, uh, the Bankex index, uh, which is also pretty much consolidating. But let's drop to a smaller time frame chart to see if we can uh, see something more clearer. Okay, so if you look at the um, the Bankex chart, slightly different in terms of the intraday perspective, but we do have these key levels of demand. In fact, uh, this looks like a nice level of demand rally base rally, also coinciding with uh, 59,000 uh, support level of open interest. I uh, don't know whether the markets will get down there, but any kind of uh, bad news or, you know, um, if... Uh, uh, you know, the, the market feels that the news is not uh, in favor, uh, prices could possibly push down towards this area and this level of demand can act as a potential trap for the market inducing a lot of selling into this area and then uh, markets might even reverse just like how they did on the day of elections. Um, if you look at supply, not uh, very clear on the 75 minute chart, but let's go to 125 minutes and see if there is anything clear, not really clear on 125 as well. Let's go to 240 minutes and check what do we see on 240 minutes yeah 240 minutes uh we do have this um rally based drop um i would say not a not a great level as of now but uh taking into consideration because there are so many supply zones which are in a similar location and if those play out then more or less this will also eventually play out but definitely keep a close watch we do have a lot of uh, resistances to uh, to the upside before the price even gets in here. So 60,100 is going to be our first barrier, then 60,200, and then obviously 60,509. Okay, so um, keep a close watch um, um, between these two levels. Again, 
uh, I'm I'm more or less expecting that the price should be ranging between these two levels. I mean, it'll it'll be exceptional if the market does break sixty thousand eight hundred and ten and then start pushing to the upside. All right, let's look at the index heavyweights now. Let's uh, start off with uh, HDFC Bank. So HDFC Bank announced its results on Saturday, and um, the results were pretty upbeat. I mean, they were good. And let us see how the stock has actually uh, reacted on uh, on Monday. Okay, so uh, if you notice, many days back we have been speaking about the sixteen hundred level, right? And uh, the one thing that uh, open interest and demand zones and supply zone always tells us that when the price comes very, very close to certain levels, um, we need to be a little careful and we need to stop um, shorting this market, right? Because imagine market has fallen from nearly 800 sub levels all the way to 1600 levels. So would you want to now start selling more, right? And this is HDFC Bank. It's not like any other uh, stock, right? So, and now when, when we put the open interest levels over here, um, I don't know whether they're going to be plotting it or no. Let me just refresh the graph here. I can't see them for now. Okay, not sure why I'm unable to see the open interest levels, but doesn't matter. Um, even then, um, there's absolutely no supply here. I still feel uh, or probably I get a feeling like this is a pro gap and more or less even before the price comes further down towards 1586 it might uh, probably just try and fill this pro gap at 1615 to 1597 and then possibly take off and if that happens then bank nifty will take off and that means everything else will also start going. So keep a close watch on HDFC Bank because tomorrow whatever happens on this stock is probably going to dictate what's going to also happen on the bank nifty as well. Okay, let's move on to the next index heavyweight, which is Reliance. And uh, yeah, we could just see it on NSE. <clears throat> okay, so if you look um, at the Reliance chart and if you look at the HDFC bank chart, it's a little contradicting because uh, HDFC announced good results and uh, the market did react in the positive way, uh, but not so much with Reliance. And uh, because Reliance has uh, a, a huge weight on the Nifty, and HDFC Bank also, you know, more or less has a huge weight on the Bank Nifty Index. More or less, I feel that uh, both of these moves today try to balance out. And, and that is also probably one of the reasons why when you look at the Nifty, the Nifty has more or less closed uh, negative to flat today. Okay. So primarily when uh, when Reliance um, uh, opens gap down or when Reliance is, is uh, considered to be very, very weak, at that time, you will probably see everything in the red. But that did not happen today because Bank Nifty was, uh, because HDFC Bank was more or less controlling uh, the fall or arresting the fall, which was being caused by Reliance. Okay, so that's why it's very, very important for you all to keep a close watch on what's also happening on the uh, index heavyweight stocks such as Reliance and HDFC Bank so that you can, you know, uh, create a, a bias or create a view. Okay. Now, if you look at uh, um, the 240 minute chart, very, very clear area of supply now on Reliance. We have this drop base drop, really nice level, very straightforward. Um, I mean, you have this nice 3100 uh, open interest also confluencing. So any kind of a gap up into this level tomorrow or any kind of news which enforces the price to push up towards this level can be a good shorting opportunity all the way down up to this level where you have the highest put open interest. So for tomorrow, I see Reliance range bound again between these two key levels, 3104 to 3133 on the supply zone front and 2907 to 2869.40 on the demand zone front. So this is pretty much guys from me. Um, I hope you enjoyed the analysis. Tomorrow is budget day. Um, tomorrow, volatility in terms of price, 
uh, option premium volatility in terms of uh, uh, premiums becoming more and more expensive, everything uh, the market is probably going to gauge. And then uh, more or less uh, post 1230, we will probably see the, the big move coming in in the market. Uh, whether that move is going to uh, be up or whether that move is going to be down, more or less demand and supply will uh, probably give us that equation. Uh, but let's trade safe. And if you are trading in futures and options, please make sure that you do not take any naked positions and are hedging your positions and protecting your positions, even if they are intraday. Uh, as long as you know you have a fixed stop loss in place, uh, you are good to go. So wish you all the very best for tomorrow's budget session. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. See you all next week, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. This should not be treated as a recommendation. Please conduct your own analysis or consult a financial advisor before investing.